One of the weird side effects of eating a whole food diet or going low carb is you have worse sleep. What the heck is going on? Here's what's happening. You need more sodium. When you eat a whole food diet, your sodium levels naturally go down. Your body tries to compensate by raising adrenaline. That's right, you get more adrenaline. Now you have worse sleep. So if you have a whole food diet or go low carb, make sure you supplement with extra sodium. Maybe put some electrolyte powder in your water. LMNT is a great brand or extra salt on your food. This should help take care of that. One more thing. There's a hormone that's released when you go to sleep that is an antidiuretic hormone. It prevents you from waking up every two hours to go pee. That also goes down when your sodium is low. So what's the moral of the story here? Whole food diet or low carb diet, bump your sodium. For all of you, for most of you, that'll make the biggest difference. Was it you who brought this up already before on the show? Because uh, not that long ago, we were talking about this. Maybe it was Dr. Cabral. I thought I heard this when we were doing our test, but I heard him or you say that that's a strategy to keep me from getting up and having to go pee so More much. More sodium at night. Is, and so what I've tried to do is the water that I do drink like past four or five o'clock that I add the element packet in there mm -hmm. and it does make a difference. Yep. Hmm. I, that's, I was super fascinated. Yeah, I did not know that. Antidiuretic hormone is what's released at night to prevent you from having to wake up all the time. And if your sodium isn't adequate, um, then you're not going to have enough of that. And so you're just going to wake up and, and go pee throughout the whole night. Wow, so I didn't even you know the that. sleep angle to that too. There's it is. So and you know what's things. interesting is I, this has happened to me before yeah. where I'll go really low carb or like super whole foods, like no processing. And the reason why, by the way, this happens is uh, processed foods are almost always really high in sodium. Mm -hmm. Like really high. Like you could e eat a steak and potato and salt the hell out of it and you're not going to touch the amount of sodium that you get in like the typical processed meal, okay? So if you have, you know, one or two processed meals a day, your sodium is really high. You cut those out, automatically your sodium drops uh, quite considerably. And if you work out and you sweat and you're healthy, you need to supplement with that. You need to increase your sodium. Otherwise, you're gonna start noticing the side effects. That used to happen to me. I would go low carb and I'd wake up throughout the night and just have to go to the bathroom. And I was like, what? This is really weird. And I just so oh. besides having better performance in the gym and better energy throughout the day, it also affects your sleep like that. That's it, crazy. It does. Also yeah, it does. potential headaches too. What are all the side effects you would say mm. from somebody who is on a, is not getting enough sodium? Because this is something that actually you don't hear a lot of people talk about. That's because we demonize yeah. sodium. Yeah. Uh, we, yeah. But none of this information is out there. Really. It's just not, it's not a, a common thing that you even talk to like hardcore fitness people that are measuring and tracking all their food. It's yeah. not common at all. Because we've been hammered that sodium is bad. But mm -hmm. the reality is that the reason why there's studies that show that a lot of sodium is bad is because it always comes paired with a lot of calories. So when you look at studies on people who eat a lot of sodium, what you're also looking at without trying are people who eat a lot of heavily processed foods. Then they have worse health. And then what they do is they blame it on the sodium. That's not the case. A whole food, high sodium diet in healthy individuals actually has, not only does it have for the most part, no detrimental effects. In many cases, it's actually show, there's studies that show that it's better for you to be higher than it is to be uh, low. So that's that's what happened. It got hammered into us. Mm -hmm. So as health and fitness people, we are like, oh, low sodium. That's that's the way to go. But it's the opposite. What are the, some of the side effects? Weakness, irritability, anxiety. Don't get a good pump. Um, you just don't feel as much energy. Um, it's like brain fog and all that. Brain too, fog. Yeah. I mean, when people talk about the keto flu when keto was a big deal mm -hmm. and everybody's going low carb and like, Oh, I got this keto flu. Meantime, it's salt. It's so funny. You would get someone like this. This when I, I remember when I first learned this, I had a client like, I got the keto flu. I said, let's see if it's really the low carb or sodium. And I gave them a bunch of sodium and they, within 15 minutes, they noticed a difference. Like, Holy wow. cow, I feel so much better. It's like it was a it was a sodium it had nothing to do with yeah. the fact that you went low carb. Oh, that intramuscular fluid, like having that like excess to be able to feel in your workouts. Like for me, I totally noticeable. Well, without a proper balance of electrolytes, your body can't communicate with itself. So the signals are off. The muscle contractions are off. You can get heart palpitations. That's another one. Um, or you know, skipping a beat type of deal. That's in fact that was one of the first things I would do with clients when they would say that. Besides, they'd say go to your doctor. I'd mm -hmm. also say. Let's try adding some sodium and see what happens. Now, there are cases yeah. where you don't want to add sodium, but it, but you'll know if this is you. Yeah. You'll know. If you're already you'll work, hypertensive or whatever. You'll, I mean, you'll work with you'll a, know that a nephrologist or something and they'll tell you. Um, but otherwise, like, you know, especially if you don't eat processed food, like, you know, dump it on. Makes a difference. And we've talked about this. Pre-workout. Pre-workout, take a packet of Element about 30 minutes before 
and then go work out and you're going to notice a difference in your, in your pumps yeah, yeah. and your strength. Yeah. So Crazy. But yeah, the sleep angle was, is a big one. And I know there's people watching right now who are like, oh crap, that's me. Yeah. That's so weird. Yeah. I actually was, was thinking about that. I should probably try that out, man. Cause yeah. it's just been a battle. Every, every night has been a battle with sleep. So. All right. Today's program giveaway is maps power lift. If you want to win that program, you have to leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. Also, go check out our Mind Pump Clips channel. This is where we do short clips and tips for fitness uh, and lifestyle. So go check that out as well. Also, we have a sale going on with some programs. MAPS Cardio is 50% off. The Shredded Summer Bundle of Programs is 50% off. And the Bikini Bundle of Programs is also 50% off. If you're interested in any of those, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. What did you guys do this weekend? We had my my son's graduation party. That was yesterday. on Sunday. That was yesterday, yesterday, yeah. yeah. Is that, that, is that did you just prepare that? Was that like the main thing? Or yeah, that was know? the main thing. We had a, a great time. I got to see my ex my ex wife's family, who I knew for a long for many years, and obviously we got divorced, kind of lose touch or whatever. Hadn't seen them in a while. It was really weird because there's all these kids. Well, they were kids when I when we got divorced, right? And now they're all you know they were all like ten. Now they're like 18 years old, 17 years old. And uh, I'm looking at him. I go up to one of them like, who are you? And he tells me, I'm like, holy cow. Wow. <laughs> you look way different. Yeah. All of them are into lifting weights, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. They're all like Jack kind of. And I'm like, you guys are into working out. Yeah. Like, this is cool. <laughs> this is great. We had Katrina's nephew's 16th birthday um, yesterday also. And what's weird for me, it's a trip, is... When I came into the family, when Katrina and I first met, Nathaniel, who turned 16 uh, yesterday, was Max's age. So it was a weird, it was a different, wow. I was, it was like, damn, the time has flown. Is, yeah, is to think that I remember when I first came into the family. Matter of fact, that was a thing that Katrina used to say to me when we first started dating. She's like, if my nephew doesn't like you, it's a deal breaker. Like that was mm -hmm. like the thing because she was. Does he like you? Yeah, he was, yeah, <laughs> he's, he was attached to her and. Uh, they were really, really close uh, when I first came into the family, and you know, seeing him now as a you know sixteen year old young man, like, is what it's a wild like how fast that goes, dude. They change a yeah. lot in those like teenage years too. I mean, you know, those little ones they change a lot too, but it's just crazy. You don't yeah. see him for like a year. Like, yeah. what happened to your face? It totally changed. Yeah. It's crazy. How far back does uh, memories go for you guys? Can you guys recall all the way back to like four or five years old? Or? I can. You can't really four or five. Yeah, really. Yeah. What about you, Just? Can you go no, that far? I back? need more nootropics for that. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I, think like I smashed my head too many can't times. Remember yesterday. Yeah. So, what's your earliest memory, Sal? What would you say is your? Uh, I remember being in the in my crib. What? Yeah. Get out of here! I swear to God. Really? Uh huh. I swear to God. Really? Yeah, I remember being in my crib and uh, getting scared. He was scared. in it till five, though. Yeah. yeah. Reading, I didn't, I didn't reading, reading the encyclopedia? Uh, yeah. No. <laughs> I didn't sleep in a bed till I was 13. <laughs> my parents were very strict. Yeah. No, no. I remember being in, in, in the crib and uh, all of a sudden, f like, feeling uh, like it was there was a lot of space around me and getting scared and, like, crying, calling out for my mom. So that was one of my first memories. Oh. So I probably was two, two or wow. something like that. Yeah. How, what's your earliest you think? Uh, I would say maybe when I was like six, five, six or something. And I, I, it's always like a traumatic thing. Like, so it's, isn't that funny? Yeah. Like, so the, uh, it was Christmas and I don't know what it was, but I think my parents told me later on that, like, I would just get really excited for Christmas, like to the point where I would throw up in like, <laughs> so, <laughs> what? Yeah. I didn't know that yeah. about you. Yeah. I didn't know. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. But, yeah. Like, just, really? Yeah. I came you get so anxious about Christmas. That so you anxious. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And my brother would get <laughs> no, up don't first. Don't do any surprises for Justin. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I was a bad gift uh, receiver. <laughs> no oh my shit. God. That's a, this is probably all part of it. But yeah. So I, I came downstairs and I, I remember, um, just being excited. My brother was like, let's open everything. And I was just like, I don't feel good. And, <laughs> and just was like puking. I puked all, we had this hallway uh, at the time. And then my dad like remodeled the house or whatever. But I, I remember puking all the way down this hallway and then all the way up the stairs. <laughs> and my parents were just like, oh, it's Christmas what's morning. happening? Yeah. You know what you want? You know, you were a deep feeling kid, right? You know what that is? You were here, yeah, you were yeah, yeah. Everett's the same. I, yeah. I mean, I tell me again what it was. Deep feeling kid. I mean, all the characteristics, right? They just yeah. feel 
feel a lot. They feel everything. Yeah. So their emotions and their feelings are just very, very amplified. Yeah. Um, and, and they you internal, definitely you internalize it for sure. Well, really. that's probably why he blocks everything out. He probably had to learn how to like cope with it by yeah. just shutting it off. Uh, but a lot, a lot of buried stuff in there. It's <laughs> way down there. I'll throw it up eventually. <laughs> but um, yeah, so hey, that's, that's, that was okay. my memory. Hey, let's see if we can get it really. I know, I know. This now, now I'm on the, what a dick I am. I'm on this mission. I'm like, what can I do to make let's him so? Or something? <laughs> what can I do to make him so anxious? <laughs> no, dude. This is a real friends let's are like a really cool car. Hey. Just look we take a lot yeah. these huh? days, dude. Huh? You like it? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. And so you think it's around five you were about five or six around that age about what five about, or six what about you uh you know so you have I, a lot of memories you don't you, there's a lot of block space right yeah very much so yeah, that's from yeah, trauma yeah yeah very much so and i do so i do have a young one like around five but you know what though what i don't know is do i have that memory because there's a video of me and i've watched the video oh, so I know what time, you mean you know what I'm saying? Like, or is is it a real like I can get back in that moment? I that I, I can't. There, I have like a five five years old coming down for Christmas, and uh, I remember coming down the coming uh, or out of my room, not down the stairs. We were in a single family, but I come down the hallway, and I saw uh, a desk and a bike. And I remember uh, running back to my, my, this is my real, when my real dad was still alive. So I had to be five or six years old and uh, telling my dad, Santa brought you, bought you a bike, dad, Santa bought you a bike. Like all excited for him. Like it was his oh. bike. It was, it was really my bike, but there's a video of that. What a nice kid. So I don't know <laughs> if that is because I've seen that video so many times, or I actually have, it feels like I have that memory. I know I've done that before yeah. where I'll, I'll look at a picture or watch a video or you ever do this, you tell a story, you make up a story, tell your friends, you've been telling for so many years. You're like, was that a real story? <laughs> it's just, <laughs> I know. That ever happened to you? Yeah, all the time. Like, <laughs> I, I'm like, like I, I'm, I, I don't trust any of my memories. I'm going to be honest <laughs> with you guys. It could be like, it's like a crapshoot. It's 50, 50 chance it actually happens, you know? <laughs> and then kind of like your crib one, I do have, a, I do have a very vivid memory for sure there's america there's no video of this of when i had my tonsils removed and that was when i was six and waking up i remember them before going down i remember the counting backwards I remember the, my mom telling me everything's gonna be okay we'll be right there when you wake up and then waking up and they weren't and mm. then like screaming crying like just oh, that's terrible. being terrified like yeah. all i remember was going under and then waking up in this hospital room where no i didn't know anybody or anything like that and i remember being fucking you know what's interesting you know what's interesting that. about that is that um it's really important even if it's hard and you feel like your kid's not going to have a great reaction to tell them exactly what to expect because it's worse. Right. When they, so it's like, you know, like parents will do this. They'll put the kid down for a nap. Mm -hmm. They'll be like, let's go, let's sneak out. Or they'll have them play with the babysitter. Let's sneak out while he's not looking or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, no, you got to tell them because it's worse when they realize mom and dad's not, not there here. Yeah, and what happened. Out. Oh yeah. You know, right, you right. know, you're gonna have to deal with the whole, like, well, oh, because you know, as my young brain connects that as you lied to me. Exactly. You just, de mm. you deceived me. You know exactly. what I'm saying? You said you were going to be there. Then you weren't like, you now know. you have gaps in memory. You've talked about, do you know what you, like years or there were like whole spans where you're like, I don't remember between this age and this age. Yeah. I don't, there's not a lot like, so, so that goes that far back. And then there, after my dad's death from, you know, seven to, you know, 10, 12 years old, there's, there's, there's like chunks of stuff. And unfortunately, mostly, and I know this, like about, I'm, I'm wise enough to know that my life was not every day drama and bad. Like we, we mm -hmm. went to Disneyland, we did some positive things. It wasn't all bad. In fact, the, the bad times in my household were about every six months. That was kind of the, the, maybe sometimes earlier, sometimes, but we were in this pattern of, my stepdad and my mom would get into these vicious fights about every six months. Then we hated my stepdad. We kicked him out. And then he would come back, you know, a month later, be back in the house. And then, and, and when they come back and reconvene, it was always like honeymoon phase. Like my right. parents went through this, like they right. had this terrible behavior of you know, extremely bad and they're hot cold. Yeah. Right. And then when they came back, it was like, you know, they were the, I was, had the parents that were like making out while they're driving and stuff like that because they're like in love again mm -hmm. for that, that time of getting back together. And so, and during that time it was pretty good. So there was, but I don't, I still, a lot of it is like blocked out and blurry. And like, if you tell me something, I was with my aunt and uncle that, uh, that actually had played a big role in raising me. My mom would, Drop me off every summer there, which by the way, that's a, here's an interesting conversation, right? So, uh, every summer, some of my best memories come from spending it with my aunt and uncle, uh, Jane and Emil. My mom would drop me and my sister there and they lived in the Bay area. This is when we lived in the Valley 
And we would come and we would do Great America and do Happy Hollow and just spend the whole summer with them. And they had a very like strict household, but they had I had five cousins, you know. Oh, so, so it was a good time. Yeah, it was a great time. And they're all age groups. And so, you know, playing in the yard. It just I remember lots of great memories with that's actually most of my memories are like oh, wow. are with them. Now the part that I thought was crazy is that I did that my whole life. And I was telling Katrina, like could you imagine like dropping Max off for three months or even a month wow. or even a week without our son? Like her and I trip out when, I mean, we're getting ready to take off to Tennessee right now. And I'm like, I might not see my son for five days. And that's like, Ugh, like mm -hmm. so hard for me. And I think, dude, my yeah. mom, not only did my mom drop me and my sister off at my aunt's, but like she didn't even like come in and come have dinner with my aunt and uncle. It was just like literally pull up to the driveway, here's my <laughs> fucking bags, yeah. walk us to the door, you know, hug them, wow. walk out the door, see you, see you in three months yeah. type of deal. And I thought, I, and it didn't dawn on me as a kid how kind of different and weird that is. As an adult, I think, and having a kid now, they're like, there's no fucking way, dude. I know. Yeah. There's no way I'm letting my- back then, dude. It is. I was like, my, I, my I, I, there's, I just, I don't know. I think I love my kid too much <laughs> to let him go for that long, but yeah. I have those, I have memories with them a lot. So, but which is cool that those are a lot of positive memories that yeah, I Yeah. It's like you do, it's like you're raised a particular way. You try and do a little better than the way you were raised mm -hmm. and then so on and so forth. So, you know, I guess I'm sure if you look back, maybe your mom probably had it much different and worse. And Oh, my mom had it. I mean, the empathy that I have like for my mother and, and it took me until I was in my thirties before this came full circle of like, I mean, I, when I, and I hope I'd never come off that way when I talk about it on the podcast of being like resentful or, you know, I, I don't wish anything was different. I mean, I, I'm, I'm grateful for the life that I had. I'm grateful that I, I made it and that it made me into who I was today. I also recognize my mom had a con artist for a father who was in and out of prison. It wasn't a part of her life when she was raised. My, my grandmother raised her and my uncle by herself working full-time job plus a swing shift. She had two jobs you know, in the Bay area. Like, so my mom raised herself with her and her brother, basically in San Jose or in the East side, San Jose area too, or mm. gangs. And so she was around all that. My uncle was in a gang. Like, so she had a rough childhood. I, know, I hear, I hear stories. My dad will tell stories and he tells them all like, <clears throat> like they're funny, you know? And as a kid, mm. I'd hear these stories I'm like, that's funny. <laughs> mm -hmm. Your dad ran over your bike with his car because you were home late. You know, that's so funny. And I think about it <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah, you'd be like, how traumatizing that would be. Yeah, dude, my dad was so poor. Like, he scrounged up a little bit of money and bought, a, a, like, a crappy bike someone was going to throw away. Uh, like it was his price. Your soul a little Showed bit. up late for dinner for 10 minutes. My grandfather yeah. got in his three-wheeled, like, the truck that he sells fruit out of and just ran yeah. it over. Yeah. You know, my dad was, like, 12. Uh, but I used to hear that story. And I'm like, that's hilarious. Then as an adult, I'm like, wow, that was... Terrible. That's yeah. Terrible. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty soon. My, my dad uh, had to grow up like, and he, he, he kind of was a parent to his, his parents as well, because like my grandma was always sick. She was like, just ill always like, and so he had to like cook and, and do everything and like basically run the house and everything while, you know, she was there and, and stuff. And so like, and he was an only child. And so he's got all that. And so, you know, me growing up, it's like, we, we had to have like, everything was like exactly in order with his military background. I was very run like a military in my house and everything. So it's like, but yeah, if you look back and you have that empathy, it all makes sense. You know, it's like, if this is the way they grew up, it starts, you know, you start realizing you the like, best. why, you know, why like w he needed that kind of control You're, and everything. You ever read I, about stories about uh, like families in countries that were really affected by World War II, like in England? Like yeah, they would do some of their because they you know they were getting bombed by Germany. Dude, um, they'd send their kids off to the country in random families yeah. Yeah. to keep them safe. Random families would take these kids. And so, bye, kids. You're gone for however long, because yeah. we have to survive these bombing raids or what, like stuff like that. Like, crazy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I think I think if you believe you're going to be a generational character in your family tree, you have to get to a point where you accept like how your family, your parents raised you, as the the best they could with the tools they had, in order for you to break that and then change yeah, that. Yeah. Because it's really easy when they they raise you that way. You're you're a child, so you're you're downloading and processing all those. Be whether you like it, resent it as your adult or not, like it's still it's still being processed in the brain as normal. Well, your mm. psychologists say that children do that because that's your caretaker. 
So the the survival mechanism is to internalize it as it's you. Yeah. And not it's them, it's you. Right. Otherwise, because that's without a caretaker, you're dead. Right. Yeah. So and then and all the things that you witness and see if you're in a if you were in a volatile type of household where they're screaming and yelling and even abuse both verbally and maybe physically, like you you see that even as a young child, and and then when you go out into the real world and try and build a family for yourself your brain recognizes yeah. those patterns as normal. So then when you get yourself into a relationship and unfortunately find you end up yeah, gravitating you towards it. the same type of person that your mom or dad yeah. were attracted to, it's really tough. And and being older now, I see this. I didn't see it as a kid, maybe because I wasn't old enough to care to pay attention. But now that, you know, we're in our forties and fifties for dog, like, and you look at these people that you've watched grow up and they're on second, third generation. It's like, man, you can really see how, that, that type of behavior, that type of mindset can just po poison a whole tree, a whole family tree, because mm -hmm. they just, one cycle after another can never break it. And it really takes somebody in the family to have enough self-awareness to process that. And then also accept and love your parents, because I think you have to do that in order mm -hmm. to really, truly break the yeah. cycle. Yeah. Plus, our I, parents were young. Your, your guys' parents were young, too, when they had you, right? They were young. My parents yeah. were like 20. Yeah. yeah they it were was, children. Yeah, it was like right after you got back from Vietnam, so... I do have a funny memory, though, that since we're talking about, like, you know, some of our first memories, like, to this day, when I walk up stairs, like, I kind of, like, run up the stairs and I skip up the stairs, like, and, and it's just, like, Is something that's... the monster doesn't get you? Dude, okay. <laughs> no joke. Like, so, uh, my monster, dad, right? so there, there used to be a... Um, like in our stairway in our house, like you could hide underneath the stairs. You don't even know anybody's under there uh, in this corner. And so as as the stairs kind of like bend and go up this way, like it's open. Oh, so someone could grab you. So he, grab, he used to grab my ankle every now and then, like as I was going up the stairs. And like, and I had no idea. Like, so I remember it just like it. I, <laughs> so this day it's still like <laughs> is there. <laughs> like I walk, I'm like, ah, that's hilarious. Yeah. And I, it's, and it's so stupid and like, yeah, but it's still something. I'm just like, look at the stairs. I'm like, yeah, that's hilarious. run up there Dude, as fast speaking, as possible. Speaking of stairs, you brought that up. So last night we're like moving a bunch of furniture. So Katrina, while we're gone is going to be like remodeling and doing stuff with the house. And so I was kind of like helping her move stuff. And I'm upstairs and I'm like sitting down and I'm like sitting down. I'm like looking at, it was like, I was actually really angry and upset. And she's just like, what's wrong with you? And I'm like, man, I tell you what, like after 40, like, I like my body fucking feels different, dude. And it's really frustrating because you know everybody said that shit to you. Yeah. And I and I and I'm like brush it off. And yeah, I brushed up because I'm a fucking fitness guy. Like I'm taking care of this yeah. shit. Like that's not gonna happen to me. Like it's not, I'm not gonna feel that. And if I do, it's gonna be way later or whatever. But like this stuff happens to me now all the time and it really irritates the fuck out of me. I, I'm walking down the stairs. I'm carrying like this this heavy cushion thing that's loaded with like an amp in it. So it's, it's I don't know, it's maybe 80 to 100 pounds. So it's not crazy heavy, but it's heavy and it's awkward. And I'm carrying it downstairs. And when I get to the last step, I actually miss the last step. And so, and I think it's one only one more step. But it was that's really the two. worst feeling, bro. bro. And so I miss. you feel like you're going to fall? And, then, and, my, and yeah. my, my foot just slams yeah. on the thing. Now, I didn't fall. I didn't roll anything, but just the impact of thinking that it one step, which is just an extra six inches of my heel, foot hitting yeah. that way, it fucking my leg started to swell up and it was hurting, and I'm just like, <laughs> then I was limping the rest of the night, and I'm like so mad. I'm just like, I can't even like have a little fumble, you know what I'm saying, yeah. and not feel hurt from it. I just <laughs> yeah, what That's is terrible. that? Because like when you Fuck. miss and you're going full throttle doing anything, like so punching and then you miss and like you get air. It's just like All those totally wrecks you. Stabilizing yes. muscles yes. are just. Yes, because yeah. it's just still going and there's nothing to like slow it down. Just, I, I, and she was like, what's wrong with you? I'm just like, I'm just I'm fucking so angry right now. She's like, what are you angry at? I'm fucking being over uh, 40. She's like, what? <laughs> like, what is that? I'm like, it just, my body, just things like this happen. And it, and it makes me mad because I'm, I'm in fitness. I'm a trainer. I know the body better than most people. Yeah. And yet- I still have these things that happen to me Whoa. all the time. Now, like, how do you think the average? Like, I, I, yeah. That's how I, she snaps me out of it. Well, honey, you know, you could be like yeah. this or that. I'm like, okay, okay. Yeah. makes me feel a little bit better. So I'm the top of the shit piles. Yeah. Which oh. <laughs> Speaking of shit pile, thanks for segueing that for me. Dude, I have to, and being angry. Uh, so the saga of Arlo, my dog, you guys know, like, the kind of, like, backstory of, like, him just being a total pain in my ass. Oh, so, it's yeah. hilarious. So it's like I was home all weekend by myself with the kids, and we had a great time. I tried to make the most of it with, like, we go 
see a movie. We go, you know, bike riding. I was like real active this weekend, doing stuff with them, having a good time. And the only thing is that the dogs kind of get put aside a bit, right? I don't have like, I can't manage all of it by myself real easily. And right, so right. I try my best. Like we go on like a walk with them and stuff, but they're, they don't get enough exercise when it's just me. And they're super active dogs. It's super active. And he especially like just needs it. Otherwise yeah, he yeah. just like spins out. Uh, and I, and I, he was fine. Like the, the whole weekend was great. And then I, I called my buddy. He has a dog that like plays well with him. And so he came over and so they're playing, doing their thing. And I'm like walking down this trail and we're in the woods and, uh, Arlo just, he's, he's going to fetch a ball. He goes down the hill and he's there a bit. And I'm like, Arlo, he comes back up. And before he even gets up, we just smell it. We smell it. He comes up. His whole face is like he he literally it looked like he's he stuck his face in a bowl of like brown pudding and it was all just shit just smeared. What? It was poop all over his face, dude. What? Where'd he find a bunch of poop? Where? Right. Why? <laughs> like lots of questions. <laughs> you know? Like, okay, down here, th this is where like everybody does a there's a um a frisbee golf course. And they just opened it up again. And so there's Frisbee golf guys. And let me just describe to you like a Frisbee golf person. Okay. <laughs> I'm getting ready to insult Dude, people. Dude, <laughs> I don't care. Okay. They're stoners. They're on, yeah. they're on stuff. Dude. Yeah, yeah. And they're down there having a good time. Great. That's, that's, that's perfect. One of them, this is my theory. Okay. Because it was not, it was not dog shit. Okay. What? It, 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 it did not smell like dog oh, shit. It was not. Human shit? It, Okay, and there was a lot of it, so it cannot be just like some little deer, you know, oh. <laughs> like some little animal, a little cute animal. Oh, this is terrible. Right? So it, it, it smelled like something terrible, like, like you know, like something we would produce. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Speak for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to throw you guys in there, too. Yeah, well, yeah. My shit doesn't stink. <laughs> yeah. I, I eat good things. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, dude. Everybody's shit stinks. Anyways, <laughs> so he's yeah, got like, it all over his like face. Lumps. It's all over his face, dude. Yeah. And like I'm he, just like, like he dipped it in. I was like, come on! I was trying so hard to, you know, help him out and like get him exercise. And, and so I'm like, well, party's over. And my friend, like, see you later, dude. I like chained him up and then sprayed him off. And of course, I sprayed him. I gave him a little bit of like psychological tormenting because it was like <laughs> you waterboarded him. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, mm, you know, like with a little bit you extra. Idiot. This is where I feel really bad because it was like, you know, you get the guilt after all said and done. Uh, I actually lose my shit on him more than like anything else. Like yeah. I don't know what I'd hate that. Like I don't, I don't like what he makes me feel. <laughs> and so I'm just like spraying him. Like, Ugh. like didn't beat him, didn't do nothing, <laughs> just uh, getting all the shit off of him. Uh. And, and so he's out there. And I'm like, you need to sit here and think about what you did. And I go inside and you know, we're doing our thing. I go back out and he's just kind of sitting there and then I bring him in, I wash him off and, um, you know, everything seemed fine. He was like clean. Now we took a shower and I need to go get dinner. And so I take the kids with me to go get dinner and I come back and I had closed all the doors and we leave them out cause they're usually fine. But somehow he found his way into like my laundry and he ate like all my favorite socks. Wow. <laughs> oh my God. And there was just oh, I like would sell this dog so shreds of, so of my bad, favorite bro. socks that I just oh bought my God. all over like, you know, the living room. And I just was like, he just got you back. He's like, oh, you're like, going to spray my face. Yeah. Dude. Stuff. Uh, and I was just like, Aah! and I was like, don't do it, dude. <laughs> don't do it. Go get some air. Yeah. <laughs> I went outside. I'm like, you know, help me and just breathing through it. This is when you're praying. Hey, right yeah. before right before a trip too, when you're about to pack all your socks and stuff like that. Exactly. Hey, are, you be, it are you gonna be wearing sandals? No, over so, yeah, no so, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. He's gonna We're all gonna be in suits and he's gonna have bro. fucking Jesus sandals. <laughs> What's holes, up with the sandals in the suit? Bro? Holes and piss. It gets it gets worse, you guys. Oh, there's more. It gets worse. Oh my god, okay. really? Yeah. So I you know, so he I have the door closed. You know, Everett's going out there to kind of, you know, he's like, oh, dad, you know, everything all right? You know, and he opens the door, Arlo jams out, you know, and he runs out there. I'm like, Arlo! And I go and like grab him right before he was going right back to go to the shit. And I grab him, I bring him inside. And then now he's like, he's like scared of me, you know, because I'm using the voice and everything. And he starts like peeing a little bit. And I'm like, oh, okay. And he's peeing on his way in. 
and uh and so i'm trying to like calm down we're watching we're watching a movie he starts peeing and and like just walk around and just peeing all over all over the house just peeing oh, peeing, 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 peeing. Wow, he steps bro. on the couch oh, just, oh pees on the couch bro and um yeah, at that point, he's still alive, you guys. So, yeah, <laughs> you still have this dog? He's still alive. Um, and and so I, man, I, I was so pissed, dude. I, I didn't like, anyway. So I realized like, okay, he's out of it. Like he he wasn't acting himself at all. Like I'm like, maybe he's sick or something. Maybe. And turns out like he started like, like swaying like this. And he's, oh, like, no. he's like tripping out. And like, and then he starts really tripping out. And he's like, he's like looking down and he's like, his eyes are kind of oh, like, no. you know, and I'm like freaking out. I'm like, maybe he's like really sick, you know? And like, all this is like, and I'm an asshole, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like ready to just kill him. Maybe he got something from the poo. And so this is my theory. Uh, and so he's just sitting there and I finally got him to calm down. He's laying down on his bed and he's just like, like kind of rocking like this. And I'm like petting him and like trying to calm him down. Feeling terrible about it. Just feeling <laughs> terrible. Cause I yelled and like made him piss and you know scared him uh and so he's just like tripping out and then he just keeps tripping and then finally like he kind of calms down and goes to sleep i was calling courtney maybe i should take him in and she's like well let's see like if he falls asleep and then he did but he literally looked like he was tripping balls and i'm like he ate something now back to the story about the uh frisbee golfers right and what they do <laughs> okay so one of them my theory is one of them is Shroom you know it. shroomed out yeah, whatever yeah. Uh, there's no you know porta potty anywhere near goes takes a shit you know in the woods near my house Arlo eats it and he's now feeling whatever they I felt I don't know if it works like that I don't know if the if the psilocybin goes through your system into your poop however poop itself can grow w weird mushrooms yes and stuff. exactly so maybe that was the other thing was maybe there's like mushrooms alongside yeah. that. Uh, and it's been there a while. I don't know. I didn't even see it. I didn't see he what he ate. He wakes up and starts talking. Why, <laughs> why are you such an asshole to me, Dad? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so, okay. So, almost done, right? Oh Whoa. My God. Yeah. So, if I get him to sleep, and then I put the boys to sleep, and I'm, I haven't even packed yet, and then I pack at, like, 2 in the morning, you know, like after I clean all this shit up, he wakes up at 5 in the morning, and he pukes. And I only know that he puked. I didn't hear it, nothing. I just know it because I smelled it. Oh, uh, man. And he puked on my carpet and, like, oh. just yorked, like, chunks he of it. He for sure ate something, dude. Yeah. yeah. 100% he ate something. Yeah. So it was whatever he ate. I was like, oh, no. Maybe I, like, terrorized him to the point where he was like, you know, I always felt all this guilt about it, you know. <laughs> and then I'm like, I feel no guilt. <laughs> you shit Fuck dog. that, bro. Yeah, he pissed his shit in the house <laughs> and walked like, out. you're fucking. I was like, you <laughs> Wow, is he okay now? Yeah, he's perfect. And he's like normal and he's like happy and everything. And I'm like, <laughs> you know like, what though? Dogs are strong, dude. Dogs are strong. They can eat almost anything and be okay. Yeah, apparently. I have like, yeah, but it'll I run have, through my I have dog. gluten and I'm ruined for a week. Dude. <laughs> you know what I mean? Dogs can eat poop and then like trip out a little bit and they're okay. Yeah, or eat some grass. You're, yeah, you're done. By, by the way, that's the Sicilian cure for dogs for anything. You know what's yeah. wrong with the dog? Give me some, some grass. grass. Yeah. Let, Let me some grass. grass. You'll be fine. Eat some grass. Yeah, I think yeah, it's cancer now. You'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, that's my saga of the week. That's it crazy. Yeah, brutal. dude. Brutal. Oh, so you're not going to get rid of him though, huh? I mean, I'm looking into it. <laughs> I'm not gonna so lie. that was your weekend. That was my weekend. Oh my god, oh, oh, it, was, it was rough. No fun, dude. It was brutal. fun and then rough immediately. That's yeah. brutal, dude. Oh, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna segue into uh, cool science stuff. You guys want to hear something interesting about the brain? Always. Yes. Did you know that they've identified potential quantum phenomena in the brain? How? In the brain. They, they, they think they've identified quantum entanglement happening within the brain, and they think that, the, that consciousness may be uh, being formed in the quantum space. So it's way more complicated. So yeah, unpack that. I'm, I'm too dumb to. Do you yeah. know what quantum entanglement is? No. You get I two. That. You get two particles. They they become entangled. I don't, don't ask me how. You can separate them by as much space as you want. You can put one here, one on the other side of the universe. If you spin one, the other one spins the spins opposite the opposite direction, direction yeah. instantly. So either information is traveling infinitely fast. Or they're somehow connected. Or there's no space. They're actually still connected. They're seeing that these this phenomena might be happening in the brain. Wow. And they think that maybe that's where consciousness is created is through this kind of quantum 
space. Really trippy, oh, right? Wow. Yeah. Really weird I shit. I wish I was high for this. Yeah, I know. Yeah, way too much for my brain. Well, you know what this, 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 this leads me to think is that we keep talking about creating, um, what is it, general... General intelligence, uh, artificial general intelligence, right? We think AI and we're going to make like this like self-aware, intelligent computer. Mm -hmm. We don't understand our own brains at all. So we're definitely going to create something that's not like us. I yeah. close. So what's their theory with that? I mean, like it's, it's the brain. I've, I've heard of it described as almost like a signal. as like you're picking up uh, signals <laughs> And that that's all feeding into your consciousness. Yeah, th that's one theory. Well, don't right? you? Okay, so I I've never envisioned the future of AI looking just like us. I just I think it'll be a very sophisticated Google search, right? Like that's what like I imagine mm -hmm. like what they're going to do really well, or where where we definitely can get is be, being able to like mathematically reduce down to the most you know common answer or idea, but it'll never have the inconsist inconsistency and the variability and emotional side of a human. Mm -hmm. There's never, you can't replicate that because that is so diverse and moving so rapidly and always changing and evolving that, and there is no, it, it's completely, there's so much randomness to it that you can't quite put a mathematical equation to solving it. So I always imagine that, you know, that's where AI will be always distinguishable from a human being is it's always going to have this very Google-like mathematical response to you. Yeah. You, you know? Yeah. You, you want to know what's even weirder about hmm. all of this, you know, is that, I don't know if you guys knew this, but the heart, the heart creates signals that are connected to, um, like the heartbeat can be tied to short-term memory and aging. And there's certain signals that happen in the brain that, that, create a corresponding spike in the brain at identical times, at, huh. at the same time. Have you guys heard of how the, the heart is like another brain or the gut is like another brain? I've heard of it. I think it's describing like heart math. There's this whole science. Yeah. You know what's that. weird about this is that in ancient like teachings and wisdom, mm -hmm. we've always talked about the heart and yeah, the, the gut, gut and the brain. Like we've else. known, like we yeah. felt this. And now we're, we're, we're reading about this and learning about what's Three going Three different on. types of knowledge there. Super yeah. strange. And then what you said about the, 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 the brain being a, the theory is that it might, one theory is that it's really like a, like an antenna. Yeah. And it's just like a radio, like the radio, you turn on a radio, there's the music, but that's not the source of the music. Right. right. That's just picking up the like source. It's coming from somewhere in the universe. Yeah. 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 Kind of crazy. Yeah. Like, you know, so I like little tripping we know. out about that stuff yeah. though. It's, so, it's so little we know, you know, yeah. who knows what's going on. Yeah. Right. I do think this requires weed for sure. <laughs> <laughs> no. for, for me, it does. Requires you know what? I think that does make philosophical like yeah. Yeah. But, you know. version. Uh, no, I, so Huberman was talking to, uh, uh, Joe Rogan about that, about his, his, his theories on wheat. And they were talking about different substances that are, that have potentially positive effects. Oh, right. right. And, uh, and like things like alcohol have zero. There's zero positive things that are happening in the brain and for you. Except from, it makes ugly people look more attractive. Oh, yeah, wow, yeah, but, yeah. but yeah. there's not there's nothing that would ever that promote help. you. Oh, I should drink because it potentially could put me in gotcha. some like neurologically or in a better like. It's, there's no, but the weed does have that. There are these 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 situations where you know, and we've talked about things like created creativity. Psilocybin's also known this way because it opens up different pathways. Yeah. So these types of, of drugs in, in small doses or controlled environments do have these positive things. Did you see that clip? Did you guys not watch that? I haven't watched that clip. No, I haven't watched the whole thing, sense, but I, mean, I saw I saw I haven't watched the whole Huberman. I can't I, I can't remember the last time I watched a full Joe Rogan. I can't watch a full Oh the three. long. Yeah. I just haven't had anybody who I want to hear for three hours that bad where I listen to a whole three hours. That's of, a long time. It is a long time. Yeah. You do, though. You're pretty consistent. Yeah, he with likes listening. the Graham Hancock ones. I love those. those. The same yeah, one Randall Carlson. Yeah, <laughs> same one. Dude. Yeah. yeah, it's just, the, I don't know. I like people that like are, are kind of skeptical and detectives and like they're like kind of going out and doing their own research in, in terms of like piecing out our history. I think our history is so... Um, I guess uh, it, it's been it's been so biased based on whoever was in power at the time, right. and like so, it's like a lot of it's just just scrubbed out. I'm I'm mm -hmm. with you. I actually am interested in that, Justin. Too. I know I might tease you about that stuff, but I actually I think that we well, we 
assume a lot because yes. we've been told something when we're young like oh that's the way it is because yeah. i i read it in one yeah. book or my teacher told me so if we just all i don't know like my mind's been blown so many times even with just nutrition and and you know what we do for fitness to where it's like dude we've got so many things wrong and like what i thought in the beginning is completely the opposite of what i think now so why wouldn't history be the same why wouldn't like all these other aspects of education be the same well especially when the best recorded versions that we have is fucking drawings on rock <laughs> like that's the best that's the best that we have yeah, it's and all there's, theories yeah. and it's there's not stories. like fact there yeah. are stories and songs about civilizations like atlantis <clears throat> that right. that were like oh we think it's a myth maybe maybe and then you start seeing evidence where yeah. it's like oh weird that that does kind of uh coincide with that theory what's crazy is even even the stuff that we do know that we say okay this is legit like um like there's certain uh historical records on military weapons we still don't know how they existed, like Greek fire. Yeah. Like that was something the Greeks used yeah. in war, and it was like napalm. We don't know how they made it. Dude, just go back through the records of uh, the patent office and see what was patented like in 1910 or something, right? It's going to blow your mind. You guys like, ever see Tesla's drawing of a, a UFO? He no, tried to I create, haven't. yeah, he wrote up like, this is what, this will be like a flying device. That's what I mean. Like UFO. people had radical yeah. ideas yeah. and like patented these things that we see today that are like new. There, there's this one like, weapon. I think the Greeks used it too. They wrote about, and it was like a big, we think it was a big magnifying glass. They'd aim it at, or a reflective device that would aim at ships yeah. and would cause it to set fire. Yeah. And they tried to recreate it. was a it. big golden uh, mirror that would just, yeah, they said it would yeah. intensify That's Tesla's, burn. yeah. What is that? What, that's his flying oh, wow. saucer. Look at that. I've never seen that. That's yeah. trippy. He wrote that. He's like, was, was it a patent, Doug, or did he just? I don't see that as pa uh, patented. Been patented like that is but, sophisticated, um, dude. It's a drawing anyway. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it looks what like year, your, I mean, year? him and like Leonardo da Vinci, it just blows my mind. What year was that, Doug? That's got to be like, Early, early, early 1900s or, or late? 1927. Yeah, 1927. Look at that. That's insane. Looks like a UFO. That's insane. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, that, anyway, is, that is. Who I, had the, who had the, who had written a thing about the eight things? I, got, I was going to bring that up. Okay, okay. I want to hear. You ever I, read an article? I love stuff You like ever this. read an article that's about like men, but you're like, a woman wrote this. Yeah. <laughs> or vice versa too, yeah, right? Dude. So, you, so see, you see both directions. <laughs> in this. I got, I got intrigued, right? The title okay. of the article was eight things Men secretly want their partners to do. Now you guys are men. This is so like a cosmos. Hold on, like, yes. secret. Yeah, yeah. So when you guys hear <laughs> this, no is men, here, eight things men secretly want their partners to do. I'm yeah. like, this is gonna be some weird sex shit. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah right, right. No, none of it. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Number Let's, one, show appreciation. Number two, be supportive. Hold hands. Number three, be attentive. Like, like you know, respect boundaries. Uh, you know, surprise them. Like men secretly. Shut up. What? Did, <laughs> what the? <hell? laughs> Sorry, what dude. The hell is this, dude? That is not. Damn it! I thought it was gonna be way better than that. So actually, did I. I was really interested. I'm like, oh wow, what are eight things that I secretly want? Yeah, <laughs> dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let me hear. Hey, honey, tell me your deepest, darkest secrets. I want you to, uh, you know, just to you acknowledge know. me. Were there to any? Be did you feel any? Of no, them? <laughs> none of them. They no, were that man. far off. No, dude. Oh, none of them, bro. Oh, man. Of them. I was all excited to hear yeah, that. I thought. I thought it was. You ever read the like the second? sex art when i was a kid like you know uh i appreciate you most houses back in the day when we were kids i'm sure you guys same thing they would have like a little like magazines next to the toilet right yeah, yeah. remember that right yeah, yeah. and uh when i'd go to people's houses sometimes they'd have like glamour or some like you know women's magazine there was always like sexual tips or whatever yeah i used to read them and be like really yeah like a guy wants you to like you know <laughs> yeah. Give him a bubble bath and rub, rub, his, rub his back. He's like, what's, Do you really what's, want you to what's tickle wrong with him? me? Yeah, <laughs> like, that's not what I want. <laughs> Although I dig a good bubble yeah. bath. You know that. Yeah, you yeah, do, bro. Nice. <laughs> you set those up. Sometimes, I, sometimes I feel guilty. I take so many baths. Bath. Like, <laughs> you take them every day? So, uh, not every day. I wouldn't say How that. many days a week? At least... Three days, and you do week. candles and everything. No, you don't. No, no, <laughs> bubbles. No, I do bubbles. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We do have this like lavender Epsom salt bubble bath stuff that I really like. I like the way it feels. I mean, I also the part of it is that like it's you have a loofah. Ma no, I I take a bath with Max a lot. Like I know that oh. there's only so long that I'm gonna be able. Well, that's to different. Have a bath. Yeah, with you're my not son. gonna be doing that with yeah. Yeah. Bubbles. Yeah. bubbles. is the move. <laughs> it's a, it's we're, already, we're already getting pretty close. You know what I'm saying? Pretty soon here, buddy. You and I can't be doing this anymore. I'm saying. Let's go take a bath. Yeah. It eventually gets weird. So this is, this is at one point we got to break this. So, yeah. but dad likes it right Enjoy now. It's it cool, while so. can, yeah. No, it's cool. I, I actually had, I mean, I, I get the TV up. I'm watching basketball and well, over there, we got the bubbles going. Him and I are playing and doing all That's kinds fun. of crazy stuff. Yeah. Dude, he's, so speaking of Max, um, I, you know, I've told you guys like the, the, you know, we've, this is the third school we've had him in. <laughs> 
I mean, this school is teaching him addition, bro. He's three years old and he's like learning. Yeah, he's learning addition. He's learning the presidents. He's learning uh, the planets. And like we were playing. And when I notice it the most, because of course I see the homework and things like that. Is I mean you I know that he, they're doing a good job of teaching them because we're we're playing uh, we play Angry Birds where we pretend like we're <laughs> well we play a game of Angry Birds mixed with Mario where you know we're Angry Birds and we're going to destroy Mushroom Kingdom right so we do things like this and we're in the jacuzzi and we're pretending we're firing stuff he goes, oh push the button oh cannonball and he says something he's like oh fire the asteroid and I go. I yeah, know what, yeah. What an asteroid is. Yeah. Where did that come? I've never said that to you. <laughs> I never talked about that. Isn't that great? Yeah, I asked Katrina. I'm like, how does he know what an asteroid yeah. is? She goes, oh, no, they're learning about the planets and stuff right now. So they're talking about space and everything. I'm like, oh, my yeah. God, dude. So, so cool to see that. I, you know, did, I mean, I didn't go to school till I was five, right? Or even, uh, yeah, I was five or six when I went to school. I started late, right? No, no, no. You know, I started early. I was five. So I started school at five. And our generation, like, you didn't learn, like, no. I mean, I think the, you just learned what an asteroid was the other day. Yeah. <laughs> so I think after Max you, told you. Yeah. You get like, <laughs> you get like uh paste and cutting. Like that's like the, the extent of education. I think in, you know, five, do six years. Do they still use paste? You remember uh, paste? I don't know if they do. Cause yeah, I think they might. Too like, kids ate it. They use glue sticks. I think now. Now. Yeah. Whatever happened to paste? Uh, I don't know. Paste I mean, was cool. I was a paste Smelled eater. so good. Did you eat paste? Hell yeah. yeah. You did too? Yeah, yeah it's eater. minty. What the hell's wrong with you guys? It's minty. <laughs> I never ate t- paste. You didn't eat I paste? No. Oh, wow. I, I thought that was a joke when people said oh. the kids ate paste. Really? You really ate paste? Yeah, At least tasted ate it. it. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely always like to eat globs of it, but no, I mean, no, no. You had I mean, to I'd taste also it. be the kid that would take those like smelling, those real good smelling highlighters, highlighters, oh, yeah. just get high. Yeah, I'd like lick it. Oh yeah. no, I like to smell it. Oh yeah, smell it and then lick it. But you know, do you, I mean, do you guys? I mean, obviously, we probably don't. We were just talking hey, about how far back too. you remember. But <laughs> <laughs> schools didn't teach stuff like that. I mean, no. you weren't learning, and, and you can see, like, obviously, the kid can't do like real serious math right now. But I mean, if he's getting used to hearing all those words and terms and things now it's going to seem familiar to him as he gets older yeah. and he do can they just let him see... do rough and tumble do no. they yeah oh, i don't know if they i don't think so they don't do that uh, anymore yeah i don't think oh, they, they did do... at the school like yeah my kids went really it was, it was awesome yeah <laughs> they had like a special room and it's like they had like, you a know, teacher there managing it and then let them rough and tumble they treat fighting way different awesome. with little kids when we were little kids and we'd fight they they kind of let us get it out and then pull us apart but like, all right let's go back to class so now important like, for yeah, boys though yeah. yeah it's like dude you know they got to figure that out mm-hmm. like and mm-hmm. put it in a safe uh environment yeah, yeah we haven't had that that yet although we do have there's a there's a kid who so katrina you know this is my first little bit of like seeing mama bear come out right Uh-oh. uh she's like I need to t- I need to find out who this Patrick kid is. I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> She's like, this is this is the third day that I've asked Max about playing and stuff like that, and he's he said Patrick's mean, and I'm like, honey, like you're like he's a kid, like he maybe he didn't share a toy or something. Like you're gonna no, our son is not like he never. This is like the third time. This that would be one thing. It was one time, three times in a row. Like and so sure as shit, she's like down to the fucking principal's office talking to the teacher and that. <laughs> Who's this Patrick kid and what's going on? <laughs> and I guess the teacher said, oh, you know, we have been having some trouble with it. So the kid is, uh, he's younger. So you can get into this 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 school, I think, as early as three, right? When you first turn three. So Max is almost four now. And at three years old, a lot of times, like, I remember Max, like, you you don't know how to communicate very well. And so you're more physical when you want something or yeah. do something. And this little boy loves my son and wants and oh. and they play together and they're friends but my son is like friends with everybody and mm-hmm. so she's the teacher is like he just follows him around well yeah and he goes you know max gets along with everybody mm-hmm. and so sometimes he likes to play with patrick sometimes he wants to play with the girls sometimes he wants to play with his other friends and so when he does the kid will like pull on him and won't let him go and like and then you know max doesn't like it and oh, so that makes and sense. the kid doesn't know how to communicate very well mm-hmm. and so i told katrina i was like hey, you calm down you know what i'm saying don't go beat some kid up you know what i'm saying like the poor little kid likes our son and he doesn't know how to communicate i said he'll they'll work it out and stuff but yeah. you know i had like a a, a a proud dad moment she's like we were talking about this whole principal office thing and she was there and she goes i came up with him and uh as soon as i walked to the office there was like one of the girls from the class and there, she was like oh my god hi max 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 and then someone heard max's name and then two other girls come running around the corner like oh my god it's max it's max and they're all you know, like this and katrina's telling me a story and like I'm, i don't know what's happening i'm getting like this big grin on my face and she's like <laughs> she's like i knew you were gonna get all like that and i'm like what are you talking about i was just listening to you and she's just like <laughs> you're like a proud dad moment because your son's wanted by all the girls yeah, in the class yeah, i know right <laughs> yeah 
<laughs> well, I guess it kind of is a little bit. You know what I'm saying? You want that kid that's like that. He's you know, popular. So. Yeah, he's no, he is. He said, the teacher says that. She goes, he's just, he's so well-liked because he's so nice and plays with everybody. That's why this whole thing with this Patrick kid was like the first incident we've had where someone yeah. doesn't like him. But I was like, oh, it's not that he doesn't like him. The kid just doesn't know how to communicate. So Yeah, he's little. Yeah, be, yeah. be patient, hon. Don't go yeah. fight some mom right now. <laughs> we're, <laughs> so uh, we're supposed to mention um, our, our one of our sponsors, NCI. And, you know, this reminds me of uh, a, a conversation that we've had many times on the show. For people who are thinking about co becoming coaches or trainers, it's definitely important to learn your craft. That's a given. But it's equally, if not more important, to learn how to build a business. Otherwise, you cannot help anybody. And this, uh, when I co when I managed gyms, this is what made my trainers successful, was that I focused on teaching my trainers how to build a successful business. Because when I would have trainers that knew how to train people, that, but they couldn't build a business, uh, they couldn't help anybody. They just didn't know how to build uh, their business. They didn't know how to get a clientele. Yeah. This is what NCI does really well. So um, that's one of the things that they do best, I say. Did I tell you what happened to me on the last NCI call? No. So um, or was the time before last that I was on the call. And I think I took Doug's time because Doug had something. or I think we switched or something like that. And so I had like back-to-back -back, like uh, uh, weeks in a row. <clears throat> so the audience doesn't know. Every Wednesday, uh, you get either Justin, Sal, Doug, or myself uh, with NCI. And it's like, I think it's 99 bucks or something like that a month. And you get these... Uh, Zoom calls where we come on there and we and you basically it's an open floor for all these coaches and trainers to ask us whatever. And um, this last one, I and I think it was because of the last one they had with you, one of you two, uh, they they had like all kinds of great like coaching and nutrition stuff. Then people were asking like what to do with certain clients that had mm -hmm. all this, these issues. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and yeah, so yeah. I got like a really heavy call like that, mm -hmm. and so. I had a lot of those questions on my last one. Oh, so maybe it was you who yeah. I followed. And I just I just came out with them after I I answered them and then afterwards I said, Hey, you know, I just want just to just be complete uh, complete transparency with you guys. I said, you know, Justin and Sal are way better trainers than I ever was. I said, um, those guys, if you want programming, nutrition, I said they're I mean they're they're the best of the best at that. I said, really, I, w I was successful because I taught the business side to my trainers. I was I was only really a full-time trainer for about a year and a half before I moved into management where I, I taught trainers. And what I taught trainers was not you know, nutrition and programming per se. I taught them about business. That was really what, what my, my strength was. And, and it's not that I can't answer a lot of this stuff because I've been doing this long enough that, of course, that I've, I've picked up a lot of this knowledge. I said, but... You know, that's you get those from those guys. You're going to get that way better than you're going to get from me. I said, so don't miss out on the opportunity to talk to me about the other stuff because that's really what I found when I went to 24 Hour Fitness. They didn't teach that. Mm -hmm. There was a huge emphasis in the space, Massive and I gap for that, and I yeah. still think this is this is prevalent today. I mean, to be a trainer, and it's like the liability thing, right? You got to know your shit, and you got to and and so they yeah, that's teach, a given. So they teach you the you know, exercise science portion. Yeah. They teach mm -hmm. you the nutrition thing. And so everything is so heavily focused on that, which I understand because the gyms don't want to be held liable for some trainer not knowing how to train somebody yeah. or teach them about and food and then they hurt them or they do something bad. So they put so much emphasis on that that they completely just disregard like, okay, now how do you go get clients? How am I going to make a living? Yeah, how do you make yeah. money? How like, do you get them to keep showing up? Yeah, how do you, you resign? Yeah, them? How, how do you, you get them to develop a better relationship with these things? And how do you run your books? How yeah. do you yeah, yeah? How do you set up the clothes? Well, maximize my paycheck if I'm working yeah, for a just company. Yeah, nobody was teaching about that, and you really couldn't find it anywhere. Even outside courses were so heavily focused on all your national certifications were focused on. The nutrition and the programming. None of them taught business. Yeah. And none of them taught business. And that really was an opportunity for me to to be to double down on that area. And that carried me. Yeah, for my a long most time. successful Super trainers valuable. were almost never the most educated. They were almost always, not yep. always, but almost always the ones that I hired as beginners. Yep. And I got to teach them how to build their business. That was just a fact. I by the way, this took me within the first two months I learned this. Because I when I first became a fitness manager, I was a kid. I was only how old was that? 18? Yeah. And I thought, oh, I'm going to hire all the, the most educated people. And they sucked because right. they didn't understand how to do that. And then I would try and teach them, but because they had gone to all the schooling, it was hard for them to adopt anything new or learn. So then I just hired some beginners, got them through a basic certification and taught them how to build a business. And they crushed. They did very well. This is why NCI mm -hmm. is so good because, I mean, you, if you are familiar with the nutrition space like in our space, 
Precision is known as like one of the the grandfathers, one of the best reputable nutrition certifications out there. Right. NCI is all of that combined with the application business. and yeah. the business part. Yeah. yeah. That's what makes there's no gaps. There. That's yeah. There's yeah. no gap, and that and to to me, and I know you guys feel the same way. Like that was the stuff that was so valuable mm -hmm. as a coach and a trainer. You could tell me all the knowledge in the world, like as far as nutrition, program, yep. and training, but if you didn't teach me how to t turn that into clients and making money, it wasn't worth much. Well, you to can't me. help anybody. You can't. Last. Yeah. Yeah. And, of and you're not going to have a livelihood off of it, which most people obviously get into it to be able That's to right. do. So. And NCI is the is the best for that. That's why we I love that partnership so much. Excellent. Anybody have a shout out for today? Let's give let's yeah. have Doug give a shout yeah, out. Doug. Doug, what's your Doug shout out? Who do you got for us, Doug? Yes, uh, Greg Williams Photography. He's a guy. He shoots a lot of the Hollywood uh, <clears throat> people, but uh, I like his style. I like his black and whites. Um, I kind of take some of his uh, photography as inspiration. But anyway, I like his photography. So if you're into photography, I suggest his page. Right on. Hey, there's a company called Joy Mode that makes a natural product that helps improve blood flow, sexual satisfaction. It actually does work. These are science-based ingredients. They're not baloney. It actually does work. You take it and then you go perform. Uh, by the way, it makes a great pre-workout as well, right? More blood flow to you know where also helps blood flow to all of your muscles. So it also works as a great pre-workout. Anyway, go check them out. Go to usejoymode.com forward slash mind pump and use the code mind pump at checkout and get 20% off your first order. All right, back to the show. First question is from Luca Curran. Does using chalk weaken your grip in the long term? Uh, I mean, I guess you could say if you don't have chalk, you got to keep a tighter grip to keep the bar from slipping out. I don't think so. But I don't, not really. I mean, if anything, it helps, uh, it helps you hold your grip and then you still got to squeeze it hard. I mean, listen, if so, I was, I mean, I don't know. If I was here. outside and I was getting ready to lift something super, super heavy that I knew was like, I mean, you could just rub your dirt in your hands and get yeah. the same type of effect. So it's not like straps or gloves no. or the hooks it's different for sure yeah it's not like you're going to adapt like specifically so i would like definitely try to lift you know without it sometimes just for difference but i mean it i don't really see that I, being like a i feel a more crutch connected. i oh, feel more connected with I, even even when i press when i don't need a tight it, grip. if i can get a hold of it i'm using it yes. i think it is yeah i don't think there's anything wrong with it at all well, just because too, from your when you're lifting, you get you know hands get all sweaty and yeah. stuff like that, and then you you lose, and it's not like due to your grip strength you lose the grip. It's because your hands are all sweaty and, and oily and stuff is why you lose grip. So it doesn't limit like your ability to get your hands stronger, or it's not making your hands artificially stronger. It's just allowing you to get a hold of the bar and stick to it so you can grip as hard as you can. So I'm a big fan. I'd say sure. chalk is uh, unfortunately um, one of the best things you can use. I say unfortunately because so many gyms don't allow it. Yeah. But you could get liquid chalk, and most gyms are okay with liquid chalk. And I, I encouraged all my clients to use chalk because it does – make you feel more connected. I like using chalk even on pressing, like I said earlier. Mm -hmm. Pressing, you don't necessarily need a better grip, but I like to feel like I'm one with the bar. Um, and it doesn't disengage your grip. If anything, you probably are going to have a, a better, like I said, a better connection. So it's one of those tools that I think is really important. I even like using chalk on a bar when I squat, just so that it uh -huh. sits on my back and doesn't slip, uh -huh. um, just to kind of keep the safety. So. Yeah. The only question of chalk is whether or not you don't want to get it on your hands or your pants or in yeah. the gym. But other than that, it's like, this is something I think everybody should should use. Oh, I think it's just more effective. Like it helps you focus more on the lift that you're doing, you know, instead of like the little tiny nuanced variables of like my hands are sweaty and like it's a little bit of a slip. And so you're trying to, you know, account for that on top of like doing your lift. So, you know, if it can kind of limit... Uh, the focus down to just like what you're trying to do exercise wise. I think it's very valuable. It's one of the easiest ways that you can make sure that everybody in the gym knows that you're a serious lifter. <laughs> that too. <Yeah. laughs> I mean, when else can you do like the triple H <laughs> thing? Yeah. Just Throwing to be people's an asshole. faces. Yeah. 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 Are you done with your, the bench? Sometimes I don't even work out. Sometimes I just rub chalk all over my <laughs> shirts and then walk through the gym. Like, this guy's <laughs> serious. Yeah. Yeah. Next question is from Ekbets. Can you explain 422 tempo and why it's important? and its benefits, should you cycle it with other tempos? So the numbers in a tempo count refer to the negative when you're at the bottom and then on the way up. So 422 would be four seconds on the way down. So imagine a squat, 
or a bench press, right? 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004. Two seconds at the bottom, you pause, and then two seconds on the way up. So it's obviously a faster positive. What's important about it? Mostly, it helps ensure better technique and form. Mostly. I say mostly because there's lots of other benefits, but faster tempos can also be quite beneficial. It's mm. harder to maintain great form, though, with a fast negative or, you know, you see Olympic lifters do this, but they're so well trained mm -hmm. and they use a rebound and the bounce at the bottom, which I would never recommend the average person use. So that's, that's mainly it. It's like, if I'm going to have a client or somebody work out and I want to ensure good form among all the other tips I'm going to tell them is to do this type of tempo because it's, it's, it's easier to watch your technique, stay stable by counting four seconds on the way down and by pausing at the bottom and you're more likely to use an appropriate weight. It's hard to use a weight that's inappropriate and do this tempo. Well, you're just, I mean, you're training for stability and control. And I mean, the, and two, you're getting the benefits of that negative. So, you know, your muscles are breaking down, um, you know, by going a bit slower. But the thing is you, you're, you're paying attention to all those little nuances of where, you know, different forces kind of pull you out of good form. And so I think that's the biggest value the IC and that's why I always apply it when teaching like somebody kind of newer or like intermediate has done it in a while. It's just like, let's just focus on, um, you know, really feeling, feeling your way through this and noticing kind of where some of those imbalances or loss of force production kind of happen. I imagine this person is bringing it up because they probably hear me reference this so much on the show because I remember when I first were, was learning about the difference in, in tempos and how to manipulate them and, and where you would use a one, one, one and a four, two, two, as far as in your training uh, methods and, and realize quickly and, and four, two, two is your, your standard kind of hypertrophy tempo. And it doesn't mean you, you don't build hypertrophy on their tempo. So don't, don't go too far with that. It's just like the standard tempo for someone who's trying to build hyper or build strength, build muscle. And I remember right away going in the gym and applying it to clients and then quickly realizing everybody around me, like nobody was using it. I knew everybody in here wanted to build muscle. That's what most of these people are doing. Yet nobody was utilizing this tempo. And then I realized too, how difficult it was, man, when I really slowed down the negative pause at the bottom for two seconds and then went up like, boy, it was made an, a weight really, really challenging. And so I, I understood, oh, this is why nobody does this because everybody cares so much more about ego lifting and adding more weight to the bar than actually getting the most effective workout. And I was obviously a trainer and in pursuit of the most effective workout. So I began training this way consistently and saw huge benefits, not just in building muscle, but also my form and technique. Because I feel like if, and this is where I, I like to train all my clients until they get really good form and technique, and then I'll manipulate the tempos. Mm -hmm. And when you when you train a four-second negative with a two-second isometric portion, that that right there, that covers probably the two most difficult portions to control the weight for people. They figure that piece out. Then you can go play with all the other tempos and manipulate that into their program. But I just think there's tremendous value from training this way, and not a lot of people do. It's one of the easiest ways – if you want, to, if you are stuck in a plateau, just do this, and yeah, and you're like, man, I've trained. I feel like I, I rotate my exercise. I feel like I do some like go actually do a true four two two tempo uh, in your routine for the next month and see what happens. Next question is from Guitara MBA. Any advice on how to enjoy eating more food on vacation without guilt while not going over the rails and binge? Yeah, so binging is when you eat beyond. Uh, satisfaction or enjoyment, when you feel uncomfortable, when you feel like you've lost control. First, we need to look at the root, and then we could talk about like tips on vacation. But the root really has to go with being too strict before you go on vacation and not having the right relationship with food and balance. And then what happens is when you go on vacation, like, oh, I can go off a little bit, but because it was so restricted to begin with, going off a little bit then, it's like the, the floodgates are open. And it turns into this relationship where it's either all or nothing. Um, this is uh, the result of not having balance. Balance looks like this. Um, I eat the way I do because I care for myself. And that means usually I'm eating healthy. And sometimes I'm enjoying foods for the sake of enjoying them because I'm with my friends or with my family. And it's not because I can't eat those things. And it's not because I hate myself or because I'm fat but rather I deserve to be cared for. So you have to develop that relationship uh, with food. Otherwise, this is what's going to happen um, on vacations. Now, tips on vacation, eat your protein first, hit your protein targets, 
And that typically will, will help with the appetite part, but this isn't going to solve everything. Yeah, so I, that's what I would say is my tip would be when you still eat, still target uh, the protein first. The other tip would be this, like when I think of like vacation eating, I, you know, I'm, I'm eating out. I'm having, you know, fried food. I'm probably enjoying dessert. I'm probably having alcoholic beverages. That necessarily isn't, that's not binging to me. Binging to me is, you know, eating beyond you being full and, and stuffing Shoveling yourself. Shoveling it in quick. Too. Yeah, like you, uh, you crammed all your appetizer down and then you get to your 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 main course and you feel like, oh man, I spent $40 on that steak so I don't want to waste it so you force all that down and then you're like, oh, I'm stuffed but oh, I'll have dessert too. Like that's like, yeah. that's binging or oh, really overeating to me or um, going to the gas station and picking up a, a bag of Lay's and crushing the whole bag of Lay's, things like that. Like that's binging to me. So I would avoid buying like bags of junk food and things like that to from that. But when I'm on vacation and I've decided that, hey, I've I've earned this, I'm going to eat what I want. I'm going to enjoy dessert. I'm going to have an alcoholic mm -hmm. beverage. I'm going to do that. And that's actually not as, as bad that's, as you think it is. That's not going off the rails. Right? Yeah, that's not going, going off the rails is like uh, you're so strict and so restricted that when you get on vacation it becomes about the food yeah you know this happens with people in the no absolutely space, does. Where vacation is about you the train food. you you work so you diet so hard for i see it happen all the time with clients and they put on 15 20 pounds in the week that they're gone <laughs> because yeah. they they work so hard to get down to this way by restricting restricting and then they get to the vacation they and they're like too excited about it yeah then and that's what i mean like you just have to yeah. be aware are you did you just go have a huge dinner and alcohol and dessert and then you then you walked in the the, the little local you know store at the at the place and and grab a bunch of candy and now you're shoveling candy right. while you're walking like i think it's the dangerous part is yeah go to the convenience store yeah like, adding all the snacks and the processed stuff in there if you cannot do that you'll you'll be a lot better off you know with meals and the thing about being on vacation you're like if you spend that time just slowing everything down like slow down like when you're eating go real slow yeah and i guarantee like you're you're not going to be motivated to to cram in a huge ass dessert yeah. after you're done that's maybe a thing. little bit that's the other thing too binging is uh eating without awareness so if you're eating something for the sake of enjoying the flavor or the experience actually pay attention yeah. to the experience yep cuz what you'll notice when you're binging is you're not even enjoying the food that's in your mouth you're just thinking about the next bite so Justin said, slow down. That's great advice. It's like, eat it and then savor it. Think about it. What am I enjoying? Wow, this tastes so good. This is incredible. Rather than, oh my God, I'm off my diet. I get to go act in this particular way. Yeah. And then it goes, it becomes this very unaware, impulsive uh, way of eating. Like you're free from, all, from being the slave to however you've been doing it before. Right. It's just like, no, let's just use this as a time to enjoy yourself a little bit. One of the things that you can do, here's a tip, like in, in, to this point, because I think this is a really good point, is so when we're on vacation, or, I mean, Katrina and I just did this, we were, we were on a vacation, but we, we took off and, and stayed at a, a hotel this last weekend. And, you know, when we were eating at the restaurant, instead of like uh, rushing to get all this food, it's like, I'll, we'll tell the, the waitress like, oh, we'll just, we'll have this one thing, right? Yep. That her and I will share mm -hmm. and we'll kind of pick at we'll and talk and drink and, you know, and then, then we'll serve, then we'll ask to have the main course and then again, eat it slow. And then, you know, so we, we make this meal turn into like a three hour event versus this 30 minutes of eating everything I possibly can on this place, then leaving and then going and getting something yeah, else to eat. Like, oh, yeah. So I, I think you just, and, but at the same time too, allowing yourself the freedom to you know enjoy enjoy that i mean i had um uh, crap i had the by the way i had the best crab artichoke dip of my life this weekend mm. oh uh, my god fresh so you're at half moon half bay, bay yeah. so you got fresh crab from from over there mixed in with the artichoke dip and you know it's funny when you eat when you eat, when you eat with yeah, the, yeah, when you cool. eat and you savor food with awareness you eat slower yeah not faster yeah binge eating is fast enjoying uh, the food they're eating is actually slow. So that's yeah. another thing to, keep, to to pay attention to. Next question is from Teresia Iglesias. Who were your mentors and the people who inspired or believed in you? You know, this is, uh, this is something that I think uh, needs to be communicated to everybody, but especially to people in the fitness space, and that is to seek out mentors. And I think a lot of people think mentorship is like this, um, you know, this like, like you, you talk about it with the person, like, hey, will you mentor me? Sometimes that's the case, but usually it's not. Usually it's just you see somebody, you admire them, and you watch and you learn from them. And I've had a lot of mentors like that. Mm -hmm. and I've also had mentors that were consciously mentoring me. Um, one of the first ones was my first, uh, one of my first general managers, Don Cardona, a good friend of mine. 
Um, I was only 18 at the time. He was in his early 20s, and I learned a lot from him in the beginning. Um, and then I've had other mentors along the way. But then there's people now that mentor me that don't even know it, like Arthur Brooks is somebody that I look up to and, and, and watch and pay attention to how he conducts himself and how he, how he communicates. I think that's a lot of what mentorship is, not the, necessarily the traditional, um, you know, this is my teacher, this is the person I'm following, or this is my sensei, you know, type of I'm deal, glad right? you said that, Sal, because I, I do know that there's this, and there's a movement like, you know, coaches need coaches and yeah. everybody needs a mentor. And it's, a, you know, it's a great way to sell you on why you guys need all, you have to spend money on all that stuff. You know, there's a real easy way to have great mentors. And, and this is basically because I, I don't have like a formal person. I'd say the closest person in my life to that was my my good friend, Mark Baker, uh, who was a little bit older than I was. And he wasn't like he was this formal mentor. I mean, it was like he was really good at a lot of things I wanted to be really good at. Mm -hmm. And I tried to emulate that by mm -hmm. watching the way he lived his life. Right. Like he he was a big part of I talk about in my about 25 when I really started reading up until that point in my life, I was not a big reader. Like, and a lot of that was him. He was a good friend of mine and it didn't matter where we were at on vacation or doing something like that. He always had a book on him. He was always growing. He was always learning, having a friend like that. And someone who I admired the way they did business, the thing, the things that they were good at. I was like, okay, I need to do more of that in my life. So, and I found people like this, why I'm big on surrounding yourself with you know four or five people that are above your level and your level doesn't people sometimes that translates as like oh make more money than you now it could be a better father than you mm -hmm. it could be a, be a better business operator than you it could be a better husband than you like look for all those i mean it'd be great if you could find a, a one guy or girl that has a lot of those attributes right so you don't have to so you don't have to have so many places but you know i i love having people that i admire in different categories of my life, I want to be great at. Like if I if I have somebody in my life that is an incredible father, that I they don't have to like formally sit me down and tell me. How, I mean, I, you guys represent that to me in my life, right? You guys were all fathers before I do. I have a lot of respect in the way you guys. You know, I admire the way you guys have parented, and so you don't. It's not like you guys sit down and formally tell me like, "Hey, Adam, you should do this with your kid." It's that. I see a lot of things you do. I see the conversations that you have with your kids. I see the mistakes that you've made that you've admitted about. Like, and so that's a form of mentorship without this like formal, but it does start with you making sure you're putting yourself in the room of these yeah. people, right? Of getting and surrounding yourself because the opposite is also true. If you don't and you surround yourself with a bunch of shit butts, people that aren't good fathers, people that aren't good at business, mm -hmm. people that aren't motivated to learn and grow and push themselves, they will weigh and drag you down no matter how motivated you think you are. So it's so important you you carve those type of people out of your life and surround you around people that you admire and you want to be like. And I've never had a formal mentor like yeah, you're yeah. saying. And it's always changed for me. Dude. Yeah. It's always tight. Like it, you know, I was obviously it's like my father for, you know, the beginning of it, just the integrity and the, uh, the way that he carried himself, um, you know, was a good model for me. But it, it became coaches be after sure. that to where, yeah. you know, they were just like, you know, reiterating a lot of those characteristics. And um, and then coming back again, I would find people just like, you know, Adam was describing like somebody that was really good at marketing. Because if I'm like going to try to uh, do this on my own. I have to go find people that are doing it really well. So I'm looking at what they're doing. I'm looking at somebody, I don't even like this person, but I know that they're really good at this thing. And so I befriend them. And so it's just because there's there's something, there's a trait there that I want to learn and I want to want to be close to it and, and do it that way. And, and I know some people can pay for it and they can get in groups and networks and all that kind of stuff. I just went the opposite direction of that and just went to go find people in my, and create my own network, my own circle of, of people that I admired and, and found what they did valuable that I could add into my repertoire. You know, I know there's somebody who's listening, a young kid that's listening right now going like, well, how do you do that? How do you find these people like this? Here's what's wrong and wrong with the way a lot of young people think right now with something like this. In fact, it gets me really irritated when I see like somebody who, who feels like, they, oh, I need to be paid for this. Like yeah. I would take, mm -hmm. I would take a position with somebody I'm for sure I admire, right? Somebody who is doing something that I want to be good at and they're, and they're, they're doing it far better than I am. And sure. It'd be great if I could get a job working for them and they could pay me for this service. But if that opportunity isn't there, I'm going to find a way to work for that person for free. 
because the education and mentorship I'm going to get is worth that. And so I was just having this conversation with a, a family friend who who's trying to get into like being a realtor, tough time to be a realtor right now, real tough to get your real estate license and, and, and do that stuff. And, you know, he was like, you know, oh, of course, using the excuse of how bad it is right now. And all oh, this, and I'm just like, well, what are you doing to get better to crap? Well, you know, there's not much this, that, and all this. And I'm like, who, do you know anybody in your area who's killing it? Like there's not everybody is failing at real estate right now. There's right. definitely a lot of people out there. Saying, Go find someone in your circle or near you. You don't have to be a friend of you yet. And who's the best at that? Yeah. And go find a way to go work for them for free. Go set up their open houses. You know what? Could you imagine being like a top realtor and some random kid comes up and says, Hey, I'd like to be, I'd like to help you out for free, no strings attached. Could I go put up all your signs for you for your open houses on the weekends and I'll run any errands that you possibly need? I heard you're the best at, at what you do, and I just would value the time to be around you. Would you mind if I actually work for you for free? Mm -hmm. huh. Yeah. You imagine yeah. you if 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 someone does that built in education that person is going to be like oh my god I just got lucky today <laughs> I said got someone's going to do work for me for free and now you have this opportunity to be around this person that you admire They're worth what more doing. than pay way That's way the more the problem is people they only think money is what's valuable. And yet they'll go pay a hundred thousand dollars for a crappy education at some college with some degree right. that's not going to. It's crazy to me. Yeah, it's crazy to me. And they even make laws now, which is terrible, where you cannot have an intern unless you pay them or whatever. Which I think is so dumb because the what you there, there's got to be an yeah. even trade. And if you only value money, well, You're that's all you'll ever get. Opportunity. You like you want to learn something that's valuable. And what do you got to trade for it? My work. Let me give you my work right. for your knowledge. Right. That to me is worth it. I would do that. Like if I had to start over, I would mm -hmm. do that all day long. Yeah, one hundred percent. Over getting paid, and I hear excuses like, "Well, how do I have rent to pay?" Sure, okay, then do it after work. Do it mm -hmm. on your weekends. Exactly. Say you fucking around on video games on Saturday and Sunday. Uh -huh. Go find this person and work for free for them on those. Put those four hours, and you don't have to do Get like, your hustle four. hat on. That's right, and go do that stuff, and and re realize that the value you're getting for that time is the education. Look, how much would it cost to do like some some like advanced course in in real estate business? Right, you know, go find some course online. And it's going to teach me how to build my business in real estate. How much is that going to cost? Two thousand, three thousand, four thousand dollars, whatever. Uh, what if you found a top real estate agent and you worked for them for free? Now you don't spend any money and you get better information, right. way better than any course is ever going to teach you because you're going to see how it's actually applied in the real world. Um, that we've we've done a huge disservice to young people by making them believe somehow that the only value yeah, that they're, they're gonna equipped get already. Is, is money. That's it. You got to get paid, or otherwise it's not worth it. False. When Absolutely I when false. I was a trainer and I and I was 19 years old, I get to this gym. I have like no education, no experience. What was cool about the gym was they used to keep this board and everybody was ranked. I mean, they ranked you if you were the top guy in hours, top guy in revenue, or girl. You were you were ranked, and it was I could see the the yeah. top three, and what did I do? I hung around those people on my off time yeah. and did whatever I could do to help them out yeah, and just be watch around. them sit next. Yes, to them. Yeah. so I could Same. pick their brain, so I could yeah, just listen doing? to them, listen to them communicate to their clients, watch the way they worked, and just absorb. That was front row seats to the Harvard education of becoming the best trainer in the gym, in my opinion. And that's the way I approached that. I didn't need to have this immediate return in revenue right away. It was like, I'm building education around something I want to be great at. This seems to be the best person it's, that I know that's at this job. I'm going to hang around. It's them. crazy to me that it gets sold as like they're taking advantage because, you know, some people are listening right now. Oh yeah, you guys own a business. You guys just want to do that so you can have uh, free employees. That's what you guys want. <laughs> it's the stupidest message of all time. First of all, you choose to be there. So nobody's forcing you. So if you choose to be there, it's your choice. And number two, the knowledge that you'll get is worth more than the potential money that you'll make. You know, what do you make? Minimum wage? What if you get to walk around and listen to somebody who actually has done it? Yeah. You ain't going to learn that anywhere else. Um, and it's, it's such, here's the deal. This is what's great about what we're saying. It's an advantage. These days, it's an advantage because mm -hmm. so many people are so- They're not willing to do it. Not willing to do it that you showing yourself- By the way, I, I know me. If I had some kid that showed me that and I saw the the eagerness, 
I wouldn't just let them hang around with me. I would feel obligated to teach them some stuff. Look at Enzo. Yeah. Sure. Look at the relationship Enzo built with us. Yeah. Enzo got in the exact same way. By the way, we tried to deny him like hella times. Still found a way to weasel his way in to do stuff for us for free as an intern. And look at the relationship. He's been long gone from Mind Pump for I don't know how many years. Kid's wildly successful already. Only t early 20, 21 yeah. years old, yeah. if, if that. And the kid's incredibly successful are already and still has a relationship with all of us. Yeah. I still talk to him, still mentor him, mm -hmm. still with that. I mean, yep. so yeah, no, that shit, that shit pays off. Yeah. Look, check this out. If you like our programs, but you kind of want to tiptoe in rather than getting a full program, go to Mind Pump Media on Instagram. For under $5 a month, you get a workout every single week. Every week, it's a brand new workout. Mind Pump Media on Instagram. You can also find all of us individually on Instagram. So Justin's at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump DeStefano. And Adam is at Mind Pump Adam.